So guys, how you doing? I hope you're having a lovely Easter. Easter holiday break. Maybe you're at work, maybe you've got kids and you're off. Um, yeah, it's all good. Um, got new stuff, bit of a story behind it. So, I wanted some new reels. Uh, but I didn't need six. So the Flardens have moved on. Decided to move them on. Nothing wrong with them. Lovely reels. But I just wanted something new. And I had to part company with them so that I could afford to get something new. And I've gone and bought a pair of these. I've got some Fathom 2s. And I've got the 15 size. They're lovely. I love them. Just gorgeous. Powerhouses, apparently. Um, yeah, I think they're gorgeous. I know a lot of people who use them. And hopefully, I'm, I'm going to get out on the back end of this video. Hopefully, I can get out tonight and have a little class with them. Now, the idea is to have two setups. I wanted a setup with my centuries to fish for smooth hounds, rays, that sort of thing. Maybe bigger fish that I'm targeting. Big fish, uh, sorry, big bass with like um, mackerel heads and, and that sort of thing. And I wanted a lighter setup as well. Um, something like, you know, lighter tips, continental style rods, you know, sort of like three to five ounces. Um, and after a lot of deliberation, I mean, I almost went down the route of getting some sort of hybrid tipped continental rods, the quiver tip rods with fixed balls. But then an opportunity arose and I ended up getting a pair of these. These are Any Fish Anywhere Forum Baits. Um, lovely sensitive tips on them. Um, three or four ounces with bait, perfect. 13 foot, and these are the Mark II multiplier versions. So I thought, and as they're, <laughs> you know, I'm like it's being a tackle tart, as they're sort of tipped with blue, I thought they'll go perfect with the Mag 4s because they've got blue accents. And then I can match the bigger, stronger fathoms to the centuries so I've got two perfect setups so I'm really really excited about that so in the summer when I'm down the beach messing about with black bream place fishing that sort of thing I can use the lighter setup that's the idea now me being me I can't just have rods the way they are I've got to bling them up a little bit so what I'm going to do is below the real seat I'm going to put some tennis bat handle um, I've got a blue cricket bat handle which I'm going to cut into strips and use that to thumb the spool and I'm going to tape that all up with blue electrical tape so I'm quite excited about doing that so what I'm doing at this very moment in time I'm waiting for the postman to knock the door with the tennis bat handle stuff then I can get these rods done it won't take long to do it, it's literally wrapping some tape around the bottom, putting a strip of the tennis racket, and then electrical tape top and bottom, and then they're done. And then what I want to do is I want to take one of those and a Mag 4, and one of these and a fire blade, and go around to my usual spot and have a few casts with both of them so I can try the reels out and then I can try the rods out. That's the plan. Um, so I might do a little bit of um, video of once the rods are done, just so you can see how they look, what I've, what I've done to them. Um, and then you'll see me down on the shore, if it's not pouring with rain, at the moment it's not, it looks pretty good. Um, and it's quite calm out there, it'd be a lovely evening to go fishing, but I've got my little girl with me. But she's allowed me to go out for half an hour to do some casting. So um, yeah, that's what I'm going to do. So next up you'll see the rods pimped, and then down there doing some casting. So as you can see, we've got a simple strip of cricket bat rubber handle, um, which we can put over the spool of the reel. 
that might be a bit too long so when I go cast and I'll take some scissors and I'll just measure that up I don't want it too too long and flappy and we've got the tennis racket handle underneath secured top and bottom with some blue electrical tape and that's going to feel nice to hold on to It was at this moment that he knew. He fucked up. So I started off with a fathom and we didn't have the best start. I thought the mags were done up full, but they were actually fully off. So the first cast that went out, it blew up to pieces the reel. It was fixable, but it took me a while to pick it all out. Soon enough I had the mags back on full and the first cast went out a short distance but it still felt nice. The reel felt lovely reading in. and the battery went flat on the camera. I don't know how many times that's happened to me. I thought about coming back home and getting another battery and going back round there again, but I managed to film a couple of casts at least. Um, and I managed to get some casts in with the other rod as well. Um, so a conclusion, after my first mishap with the bird's nest, I just didn't put my head torch on, so I, I thought that I'd already set it to mags fully on, but they weren't. Um, anyway, with the mags, fully on it cast beautifully um, but it didn't go very far I took three clicks off and what a difference that made the, the reel just feels quality the mag 4 is lovely don't get me wrong but there's just something different about that fathom it just feels it cranks in effortlessly and i think that's why they use these on places like the bristol channel and rocky marks and things like that where you've got to crank it in a bit quickly to, to avoid sort of snags and stuff. Um, but yeah, winding in just feels lovely. Casting feels lovely. It feels lovely in hand. It balances beautifully on that fire blade. So I'm really happy with that setup now, those on the fire blades. Um, and then I switched over to the, the fore and bait. And, and after casting a few times with the Century, the fore and bait felt soft. And it is a lot softer, obviously. That's the whole idea is to have the second set up to have the lighter set up and matched with the mag fours it just so happens that the the blue accents and the blue accents on the reel they just work they look beautiful and the blue tripod as well um, and although the bait the rod felt floppy in relation to the century which is an out and out casting tool still managed to put a bait a bait a lead out quite a long way but at three or four casts um and it felt lovely, to be fair. The rod, even with four ounces of lead, the rod had a bit of a bend in it when I was winding back in. The tip's lovely on it. It's just going to be so much fun fishing with that rod. Especially if we do manage to catch something a bit decent on it. Um, but that's all I wanted to do for this video. It was all about new rods and new reels. Um, letting you have a little look at what I've got, why I've bought them, decisions that I've made. And a little bit of casting with them and a conclusion. So that's it for this one. To be fair, it's an absolutely beautiful evening out there. Um, it would have been a lovely night to go fishing, but tonight I just can't do it. But I did manage to spend an hour um, playing around and making a little video for you guys. So I'm going to keep my ear to the ground. Tomorrow morning, me and Jessica are going to go on a little recce trip round to Hilsey. Um, case a new mark out. We're going to take a bucket with us as well, because it's going to be low tide. 
Just have a look, see if I can find some pita crabs. Um, if I can find some and then shell them and freeze them, then I've got some in sub in stock in supply. So um, that's what we're going to do tomorrow, and then I've got the whole of next week off. So I'm going to see if I can get out somewhere and have a little go somewhere. But until then, thanks for watching this video. Um, thanks for following the journey. Again, no fishing in this one, but just uh, documenting progress and um, where we are. And I'm really happy with the way things are going. So yeah, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one. Take care, guys.